What is up everyone? Really quick video for you today on Spearman correlation. So when we first learn about correlation in our statistics courses, we just kind of call it correlation from that point forward. But the official name under which we first learn it is the Pearson correlation. The Spearman correlation is a quite often actually used metric in data science for specific purposes. We'll see today what those purposes are. But I think it's really important to know because it solves a key issue with Pearson correlation, which we'll get into right now. So with any kind of correlation, whether it's Pearson correlation or the Spearman correlation we're learning today, we're talking about what's the relationship? Can I measure the strength of the relationship between two variables? And today we're going to say that the first variable is your performance in basketball. You can measure it with whatever your favorite basketball metric is, number of three point shots or time in the game or whatever you want. And on the y-axis, we have our other variable, which is your performance in bowling. So that could be measured again with whatever your favorite bowling metric is, your strike ratio or your average number of points per game, whatever you want. And let's say the relationship, so each of these represents a person, the relationship between your performance in basketball on the x-axis and your performance in bowling on the y-axis looks like this. It's kind of this S-shaped upward going curve. Now, if we look at this curve, we can say one fact. And a fact is that if you're better at basketball, so the further you are right on the basketball axis, you're better at bowling, which means the further up you are on the bowling axis. What that means, you can take any two points, any two people in this diagram here, and we can say for a fact that the person who's better at basketball is also better at bowling. Said that way, and if you immediately now ask me, what should the correlation be between basketball score and bowling score? I'd be very, very tempted to say 1.0 or perfect correlation. Because if you ignore what you know about correlation so far, and you just kind of think about correlation in more the, the everyday meaning sense of the word, this is a perfect correlation. Whoever is better at basketball is better at bowling. And shouldn't that be enough to have a correlation of one? But now if you go back to your statistical definition of correlation, and visually you probably know that as all the points go in a straight line, and if that straight line is upward sloping, then you have a perfect correlation. This clearly is not a upward sloping straight line. There is a positive trend, of course, but if we were to draw a straight line through it, well, it's not exactly going through that straight line. And because Pearson correlation is measuring the strength of the linear relationship between two variables, it's going to be less than one. It's still gonna be a positive number because there's a positive trend, but it's gonna say, you know what? Relative to a perfect linear relationship, there's some noise in here, and therefore I'm gonna give it a suboptimal Pearson correlation. And so it seems like we're kind of at a paradox right now where the definition of correlation we know isn't giving us what we want to get. We're getting some number less than one, but we want a perfect correlation because I don't care if the relationship here is linear or not. All I care about is if someone's better than basketball, are they guaranteed to be better at bowling? And that is the case here. And so that is where Spearman correlation comes in. The first step of Spearman correlation is take all the data you have. So we're gonna assume this table up at the top here represents all of your data. So just assume we have five people. The first row is their score in basketball. So again, these scores can be anything, but they're ranked ascending 1.6, two, and so on and so on and so on. And the second row here is their score in bowling. As we see, you can pick any two people. And if someone's basketball score is higher, their bowling score will also be higher. The first step is to take this table and turn it into a table of ranks. Not of what the actual score was, but what their rank is relative to everybody else on that variable. So here, the rank of the basketball axis is one, two, three, four, five, because this person has the lowest basketball score, so they have the lowest rank. Then who's second place? Well, it's gonna be this, second place counting from the bottom, of course. Third place, fourth place, and fifth place, or the maximum one right here. And bowling, we do the exact same thing. And now, the very simple thing to get Spearman correlation is to actually revert back to our definition of Pearson correlation. That's part of why I love this metric, because you don't really need to learn anything new for this. You just need to first transform your data from whatever raw counts you're looking at to the ranks of people of your objects on each of those two variables. So you take our new rank data, we're gonna represent that by R of X and R of Y, that's your rank of the first variable and your ranks of the second variable. And you just take a simple Pearson correlation using those ranks instead of the raw values. And so this formula we see right here is exactly 
what we know and have known for a long time as the Pearson correlation. It's the covariance of your two variables, except this time it's the covariance of their ranks, divided by the standard deviations of those two variables, except here it's divided by the standard deviation of their ranks. And this is still going to be bounded between negative 1 and 1, because at the end of the day, it's a Pearson correlation, which is bounded between negative 1 and 1. It's just a Pearson correlation between ranks instead. So you'd have a perfect Spearman correlation if the ranks perfectly line up, as they do in this case. You would have a negative one Spearman correlation if the ranks are exactly opposite. So if this top list went one, two, three, four, five, and the bottom list went five, four, three, two, one, which would be some kind of negative relationship between bowling and basketball skills. And just like with Pearson correlation, you'd have a zero Spearman correlation if there was no relationship between the ranks of basketball and bowling or whatever your two variables are. So most of the intuitions you have for Pearson correlation still carry over to Spearman correlation. It's just that we are relaxing this assumption of linearity, which can be a very aggressive, very strong assumption in the real world. And we're relaxing that to say, I don't care if the relationship is linear or if it's like an S curve or if it's like an exponentially sloping curve. I just care that the rank of one person versus another person on one of my variables generally agrees or disagrees with the rank difference on the other variable. So hopefully in this video learned about an alternative form of correlation, Spearman correlation. I actually use it quite often uh, when you're dealing with ranks and problems that require ranking. Uh, if you like this video, please like and subscribe for more videos just like this. Any comments are of course welcome in the section below and I'll see all you wonderful people next time.